Okay, so we're gonna start with the uh, with the trucks now connected. I just uh, just gonna drop it off here at beautiful University of Bridgeport. So once again, the F three fifty and the connection that was most appropriate for us was the uh, was this setup right here, which is the ball in the, the frame of the back of the truck on the flatbed, and that gives you a lot of articulation. So use my hand here. If you know the trailer can go back and forth like this, the truck is is my camera and my hand is the trailer. It can do a lot of articulating like this on uneven ground and be stable. Rides nicely down the highway, no problems. And then there's the connection to the trailer. And this trailer that we have here with the uh, air conditioning units on the top will easily pass under an 11 foot two uh, bridge. Here's down the side. This is with the sides in, as you saw before we had with the sides open, the sliders on top also have an awning uh, and the awning uh, pulls out when you open this up so if it's raining you don't have water coming inside the uh, any of the seals and then as you can see this uh my leg here you can see that this is not very high you probably have about maybe 10 inches of clearance 10 to 12 inches of clearance and then underneath is fully retracted down there and that takes away about another three to four inches of clearance so you have to be careful when you're going underneath when you're going across uh, like a curb or something like that you have to, they have to be careful of the um, of that actually you're know, hitting the curb and ripping off one of the one of the feet the plates that are on the bottom they're called jack plates and here is the triaxle three axles. That's one of the things you have to keep up on if the if the lab is active. Um, this is a, this trailer is a triple axle trailer and you have to keep uh, keep up with the brakes and the backing plate. The brake drums that are in the back here they'll go through uh, through brake pads pretty quickly and you have to stay up on that because that's a very important point. Uh, you don't want to be snapping axles. Got to keep the keep track of the uh, of the seals, the axle seals. Uh, when you think about it, the um, when you're making turns, this tire is dragging quite a bit, and so is that one. And they also they also lean uh, very very steeply, and they're designed to do that. They lean back and forth on these triple axles, and they pivot on this center wheel. So the back one will be leaning this way, and this one will be leaning this way as it's pivoting on that center wheel right there. So tires. Very important with tires is that you have to use a very, very good quality tire. And I, uh, these are uh, the Goodyear, Goodyear, um, Goodyear G6, uh, 614 RST tire. That is a very, very, very good tire. Well known through the trailering industry is not the one you have to worry about popping on the highway. The lower price tires are definitely not worth it because you can imagine if a tire, one of these tires blows, and starts flapping around, it will tear all of this bodywork open down here and cost a lot more than just replacing a tire. You'd be fixing bodywork all through here. So high quality tire with well, uh, well maintained axle seals and brakes is extremely important on these vehicles. Outside we also have a speaker system that's inside, that's um, connected to the stereo that's inside here and in a second I'll do a little bit of uh, opening these uh, these areas up. Down there is where the uh, where the, uh, the diesel fire heater is and obviously you know this is wrapped in our original our original wrap it's going to be rewrapped again but this is all a wrap this is not painted it's a white trailer that's been fully wrapped so a good look overall from down here the trailer itself is 44 feet long from the from the front of the trailer to the tip of the trailer there's a light up above in the back and you can see the bumpers that are on here and 
once again I'll come back around with the uh, with everything as I open it up. This side, the other side is the business side, which has the door, it has everything where we do all the presentations. Um, when we're doing anything outside, we have the awning out. And on this side, all we have over here is that one slider, because all the activity is on the other side. So now I'm going to walk towards the front, and you can hear the generator running. You can see the exhaust stack up on top where it uh, moves straight up. That's where that's where my limiting area is when it comes to going underneath bridges. Is that stack up on top it has to be high enough to clear everything and not create black smoke all the way down the trailer. But that's a diesel. Uh, it's a diesel engine inside there. That's a Kubota motor that drives a. Um, I believe it's a 25 kW generator inside there. And those uh, the air duct that's open right now. And you can operate these with that motor running as you're going down the road. Uh, like for example, it's very, very cold here, so an hour before I land on site, I start that up and I get it very nice and warm on the inside, and I'm driving while that's on. And it's designed to be able to do that. It's not, it doesn't harm anything, it's actually made for that. But here's the fuel filter, and right down here is the plug for the land power. So when this is parked, then you can plug this in, connection so that it can operate everything on the inside of the trailer efficiently. So it's a 50 amp plug and we have a land plug that plugs right into that. It's a twist lock and also a twist lock and screws on as well so it's completely secure. So there again there's a slider on this side that matches the one on the other side straight across. Right here is the generator and under here is the service box. I'll come back again and we'll do this uh, with the walk around and with everything open. So now, so here is the trailer disconnected uh, from the truck and open. I've also leveled it out as if it was positioned on site for an event. So as you can see inside here, this is the mechanical area. Uh, has the fuel tank that's for the uh, it's a 40 gallon fuel tank has a fuel heater on the side of it right there you can see we keep the cones inside here the batteries are down underneath here two batteries and you have all the mechanical works inside one area uh, there's the inverter and power transfer switch for when you're plugging into the land power so this is a really a uh, really comprehensive area uh, one of the heaters is right down in here, and you can see the tubing for that going uh, through this side. I'll show you the full size heater, but this is the uh, the one mechanical area. And on either side, you can see inside here, this is where the piston sits for the, uh, the jacks that are down below. And here's the control panel that you turn on and off to uh, function the bench. You can see all the lights are on says all the four uh, jacks, the hydraulic jacks, are set down. And all those buttons, can, you can uh, raise and lower the front, raise and lower the back, and raise and lower either side, so that you can kind of, uh, you can balance it out, so you can go this way, but you can also go this way to get it completely level. And I installed some little bubbles here, and another one over here, so one for this direction, and one for that direction. So either, either direction we have it and mark it out and I always keep a level so that I can take this level I'll actually pull that out of here and then put it up against here so I can measure this way level and in this direction and I put a, a hook inside here to keep that level always have a full level on there and then shut this off while you're doing the event box it in place and close the door this door swings up, uh, even when the truck is pulled up to here, it's designed so that you can open and close it while it's hooked up. So this simply closes down and then you lock it from here. So as we go around, like I said before, this is the business side. Up in here is uh, an air compressor because there's, there's air compressed air that goes all the way to the back. So you can put an air hose for uh, blowing up things, blowing out things, or anything that runs on pneumatics. Uh, the front door, right here, and the steps. You never want to take the steps and put them uh, 
underneath the trailer you can end up getting a little bit of a little bit of damage over in this area uh, you rest it down you always have to make sure that the steps are away from it but um, got to have those steps at all times as you can see up on top there is the uh, the awning that I was telling you about that comes out with the slider and that stops rain from building up and you're know, coming it down if it's a rainy day it won't allow it to accumulate on top of the slider and so it drips off of either end and you don't end up getting water sliding inside through the side seals and then the slider close up here also night light there's a, a porch light right above here so in the evening if you have an event that's in the evening on the outside you have this light here but you also have lights back here now it's very cold out right now so the awning is actually uh, as i said before it was frozen but that awning comes all the way out about about uh, eight feet from the side of the trailer comes down to uh to right about the bottom or the right right about it right to here so if we stand back right about uh, between the between the college and the advance is about where it uh, lines up with when it comes all the way out it has an auto re auto extend and an auto retract button and it also on days like today when the wind is uh, blowing pretty good it also lifts um, with the wind so it doesn't allow the wind to do damage we already talked about the the wheels but as you can see right now the wheels are off the ground this is completely lifted in the air by the jacks that can happen many many times you know very often if you're on an angle and as you can see here we'll step back the ground is at a pitch it's uh, sloping down so the front the back is very high because I was able to lift it on top of the hydraulic pistons. And there you can see the piston on the inside of this area here that has the other heater. So you can see how high the back is. And then take a look how low the front is. So you can see how this is leveled out. The trailer's level even though the ground is not. As we come farther back, this is the lower cabinet. The lower cabinet holds the, the heater that goes in the back. You can see the air intake and the air exhaust for the actual burn. And then the intake and the recirculating air comes in from the large tube, goes through the heat system, and back out. These little heaters right here, there's one in the front that you saw in the mechanical area, and this little guy back here will bring the temperature of this trailer up to close to 100 degrees if you let it and that's while the temperature outside is about zero so it's extremely efficient and once again there's the piston top for the hydraulic lifters the hydraulic jacks and they all have a 10 inch pivot, pivoting jack plate on the bottom so that they can lay out you can pick them up on uneven ground and that plate will actually kind of pivot with the ground texture here is the exterior monitor that monitor will swing out has it's uh, it's attached to a swing out on it I'm gonna pull it out right now but it will come out and it's connected with HDMI either in you know you have HDMI inside and you can put a computer outside so you've got HDMI USB it's also cat5 capable it's connected to the audio system so that when you want to run audio we have speakers up above out here. These are um, marine type speakers, so they're they're clear, loud, and they're weatherproof. So next to the lights, you can see where we have speakers up there. So you can actually power, here's power outside, right next to that. So down here, gotta repaint this. The, the weather does get to these things, but this, this is due for a rewrap and a repaint, so I haven't touched it up. But you can see we have 110 power out here. So you can have an event outside, underneath the awning, with the monitor. So outside of the sun, you can bring, brings the glare down. And you have a full-size monitor out here that you can connect the computer to to do your presentations outside as well as inside, with audio. I'll close that down. Come around to the back. And you can see the back door is down. There's a 
nice steep slope to that down here because we have the back end way up. But it also has a flap on the back and lip on the back so you can use this as a handicap access and it's also where we wheel the chairs in and out and it has a large door on the back. So that door swings out and we'll walk up here and it has a standard style um, RV, RV door here and that swings out like so. Regular door closer on the top so it does pull it closed like standard door. Lockable. And so from the rear, that's what it looks like with it down and from the side. Go around this side. And this side before, like I said, the business side is on the other side. That's where all the events. So you put this against the curb. So you can put this against the curb nice and tight and then pull the slide out over the top of the curb. You just have to make sure there's no signs, fire hydrants, or anything that can interrupt on the lower side when you slide this out that it won't hit. Once again, our power on the outside. And then inside here. So right now, I have the trailer set up for transport ready, but I'm going to show you, we have in here, this is the, uh, let me, first I'll put it down, and you can see this from, I'll step back here, there's the front door, and there's the first uh, desk to your right, excuse the floor, we had an event today. A lot of kids going in and out, so needs a little bit of a cleaning. We clean this every time it goes out for an event. We do a clean out of the floor, wipe down all the countertops, disinfect everything. But we have um, we have the, the uh, fluorescent lighting up on the top, along with our speaker system. The speaker system goes throughout the entire length of the vehicle. We have speakers about every 10 feet, excuse me, every eight feet. And the reason for that is we have this connected to an audio system with a lavalier mic setup that's in the back and I'll show you that. I have it connected right here with, uh, through the output um, for the speaker that goes in through there and then into this remote unit this uh, Sure GLX uh, D4 is a fantastic unit. Um, the batteries, uh, spare batteries are kept in here, but that, uh, that system uh, Wi-Fi is back to the headset that's in the rear, and this is the little electrical room for the interior portion for communications. Everything is inside here. Now I'll step back once again, so there's the electrical room over there, the communications room, and right inside there we call, that's our attic. And in the attic is where we store all of, we have our table in here and uh, a stool for the back when we're doing instruction. Um, there's the spare tire, full size spare for the trailer. And inside this side is where the generator is. And I've put some sound deadening on this door, which was a big improvement. And over on this side is, um, this is where all the hydraulics are, 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 um, are located for all the different hydraulic systems, for the lifting system. And in the back over there is where the uh, compressor is. Now if I go over here, here's the switch for the compressor. If I flip on that switch, you can hear the compressor start up. Hear the generator dip a little bit and then shut that off. So that's hooked up inside there with a switch. This has also got fluorescent lighting inside here to light up for uh, when we're, when we're uh, 
you know, we need like bright light or doing work inside there. There's also a vent up there that has an automatic fan. And up on the top we have covers to keep any kind of water or rain from coming in. Even if we're going down the highway and we need those open, um, the rain does not come, the water does not come uh, misting inside. And if you notice, you can see these little vents right here that are all through the trailer. And those are connected to the heat system up on the roof. And we can, uh, it, it runs the heat all through the entire system. Now, along with the, the, um, the fluorescent lighting system, which runs on the AC side, we also have DC lights that run throughout the uh, trailer as well. So even when the when the the motor's not running and we're not connected to shore to shore power, we can shut off these lights, but we still have the uh, the DC lights that are running off the battery and they also have them that run down the center. So this is the center DC lights, but they can, you know, if you want to have like if you want to dim things down for a presentation on the smart board, you can do that as well. But what we do for our events is that we leave these lights on here and we also have the accent lighting that goes on on each of the stations. Now we set this up with stations to have as sort of a classroom. So they can sit at these stations and they can face that direction in the trailer where we have a smart board set up and it's a comfortable setup. There is power at each one of these stations along with Cat5 and USB connections in the meal for charging. But there is Cat5 if that's the way you want it to go. And that Cat5 is connected to um, a, a, a network that you can connect Cat5 up into the electrical room, once again, over here. And that Cat5 station is in the back, back there. You can see the Netgear, Netgear station back there. That's where the Cat5 is distributed for the network, the hardline network in the uh, trailer. So over here, next to the door, here's the control panels for the slide outs. You also have uh, the curbside uh, scene lights, which are back there, and all the controls here for the uh, porch light and the air compressor, as we showed you before. And once again, Cat5 connection over here. So these slide outs, this is the center section, and this becomes like the larger area slide out right here. So both of these sides slide out, and when you come to the back, this becomes the hallway in the rear, and we usually put chairs up against these, so you'll have two people over here, two over here, and then one at each one of these stations on this side. Right now, as I said, it's uh, set for ready for transport. So one of the things you have to keep in mind with these is that when these are moving down the road, there's a lot of things to consider that don't always come with the trailer. You might have to do some setup, but there's little details. For example, these little hooks did not come with, you know, on the trailer. So whatever it is you're going to transport, I installed these uh, little D-rings top and bottom on both sides underneath all of these stations so that we can take and store, you can see the D-rings that are set up over here and also on this side, so that each one of these stations you can fasten down whatever it is that you need inside here for transport. All right, that's a very important thing to remember if you're gonna be uh, using it for multiple uses. Now another thing up in these, for example here, this is, um, this is our 3D printer and what I did was I designed up these, uh, these carts where it has the tray is detachable, but this is actually attached to the tray and the tray removes from here. We take off these, take off these switches. Sorry, I had this down here. The tray right here is disconnected from here. Now you can see a little bit of a space in between and right here, you can see these little um, Teflon skis. So the way that this is set up, this is a little easier to see over here. This one, so the height, the height of the, of the cart is designed so that you can take this, this piece that holds the piece of equipment and you can slide that on the skis right on top of the countertop here. This cart, once it's separated, the height goes to about right here underneath 
the countertop. So you can slide, you can actually slide the tray, the uh, cart underneath the counter when you have the piece of equipment on top. And it fits right underneath these tabletops. Now, here's the, uh, here's the smart board. Now there's other, uh, here's the smart board and here's the cabinets. And here's another little thing we're gonna talk about right here. Now, first of all, one of the things to talk about being in transit is things, small things like this is our storage area for in our in our cabinets. And in here you can see the laptop computers. There's a very specific reason why we will not put one laptop on top of another on this shelf. And that's because when the laptop is sitting up here, and you can see the height in conjunction with the latch. Well, we had stacked up some laptops in here and they slid back and slid right into this latch and it opened the door and all of this stuff came out. So we very intentionally use containers here that are angled away from the latch. They can't, whatever you have up here, cannot slide into the latch that's on this side and open these doors. And that can happen. The other thing to do is to remember to consider the heights. You know, whatever you're gonna be using in here, um, you wanna consider the height of your, of your um, containers to be able to keep things stored inside here. I'll go back over here. And we were just, we were just I was showing you, here's the, the smart board. Okay, that we have this on a stand. Now that stand is designed to be sitting in a classroom. But one of the things we learned is that this is at the tail of the trailer. This trailer was actually, you can see this aluminum uh, flat piece that's on the floor, was reinforced to have a piece of equipment sitting back here. And you can see the legs of the stand are sitting there. Well, if this isn't properly fastened, if the stand for the smart board isn't properly fastened, it will slide back and forth, you know, this way and that way as you're driving, as you're putting on the brakes and you're putting on the gas. And so it was marking up the base of the, of the wall over here for one. Two, learned very quickly that you have to put at least one wrap on that to keep it from sliding back and forth. So there's E-Track here and up top. And this strap is fastened in through the back of the of the uh, of the top of the um, the stand, and that stand instead of having it sliding up and down adjustable, we fixed it at one height and actually drilled through this, and I put a grade eight bolt through it to make it stationary because as you're bouncing down the road, it starts pushing its way through the the stand, and then it ruined the sliders up and down. Not designed to do that. It was designed to be sitting in a classroom. We also added. Um, you know, the top of this uh, thing was starting to shake itself apart. You can see over there where it has a little bit of a bend to it. Well, that happened because of the type of metal that was on here. We put this, I uh, designed this truss over here and attached that to the top and screwed that, to, mounted that to the television so that it was a lot stronger. It was taking away that, that, uh, that leaning, uh, leaning weight uh, when it was going down the road. So this is also, there's a, I put a bumper inside here that matched the distance of the legs separating it from the wall back there so that it's fastened at the top secure, can't go back and forth like this. It's actually strapped down tight against that leather wrapped block of wood, which is attached to the E-Track by this other strap. It's in like a strap basket that I made and it keeps it from going. But these are the little things you have to pay attention to because you don't want your equipment to be shaking itself apart while it's going down the road. So here's the top strap up here on the E-Track and then the bottom strap on the E-Track as well with that one wrap and then tightened down. And we also made things like this to carry the, you can see the cord over there, to carry the cord to be able to come around and then wrap behind the smart board, when, it, when the smart board's sitting out here, to have the cable come around the person that's doing the presentation work and not hang out here like this. Once again, the little things. Another little thing, this strap up here. I uh, 
made, you know, sewed some leather into this uh, side and into the corner side because this smart board monitor would start to shake back and forth, like wobbling like this, on, you know, pivoting on that stand. So that's one of the things that was starting to shake itself apart as we're going down the highway. It's like a harmonic, harmonic flex, you know, going back and forth and it starts to just wobble back and forth, back and forth like this. So with this strap on here, um, you know, put cinched into the edge of the E-Track on both sides, stops that from doing this all the way down the highway. Did a lot of damage to the, to the, uh, to the stand back there, but fortunately we were able to catch that. So once again, I'm gonna say it again, all the little things that you have to think about, but it's sturdy enough with the stand that we can take this piece of equipment, okay, with, this, uh, with these, you know, these unique um, uh, carts that are separating, and we can attach them to that stand. So going down the highway, lock in the casters, another piece of equipment down underneath here, a sheet metal bender, and we can tie it right to the rack. And it's just, just all about being creative with storing everything, but making it so that it can go down the road secure. And when you jump back in here afterwards, it's not a bunch of, not a mess of a bunch of equipment. Everything is tied down. And that's important, putting tie down positions wherever necessary. I even put some loops up on the top to be able to tie down certain things to uh, the, the top deck. Not heavy stuff, just whatever can be put there for transport. Here is the, um, the thermostat and the control for, the, for that heater that I told you, that I showed you that was outside in that bottom underneath the monitor. Well, here's the, the, uh, the intake over there. It brings air in there and it shoots it out here. So when you're standing over in this area, in the back here, while you're doing a presentation, your feet are very warm. <laughs> if this is on, it's blowing very hard. So if someone's out here doing a, an eight hour presentation, it can get uh, quite warm. So you can, you can adjust that with the, uh, the, flow, um, the flow metering over here with both the thermostat and the temperature control. Now on these, it says electric heat as well. These overhead electric heaters, when you close these vents right here, it sends all of the air that's coming through this system, bringing it in here, and it sends it throughout the entire trailer through all of these vents that you can see all the way down through the trailer. So they're connected. And right down there is the other unit that's exactly the same as this one. There's two of them. So you have one on that side, and one on this side of the ceiling, and it heats this entire trailer beautifully, okay? Now, behind, on this side, this side goes flat to the floor, but you can see where the wheels are underneath there. That's the inside fender well right there. Same as on this side, that's the inside fender well. But this side, the wall comes to out here. Right behind this wall, inside here, this is where the monitor is, behind here. And your connections, as a you know, cable, standard cable connection, and your HDMI, this is your uh, connection to the HDMI on the outside. So if you plug in here, you're connected to the HDMI that's plugged into the TV on the other side, the monitor. So this area here is the monitor that's on the outside. There was a, uh, a mount up here that was for another monitor, but we never used that because this became our presentation area. We took that mon that that um, that's uh, mount out, and that's where that was. And then here are the cabinets in the rear for storing things like the cam straps that we use, um, and you know different you know different items. We have you know larger straps. Th these are emergency straps just in case we have to um, uh, anything that's super super bulky but different types of straps, ratchet straps, cam straps, bungee cords. Um, we have a vacuum cleaner inside here, a you know, small shop vac, safety glasses, safety equipment, all kinds of stuff that we keep inside of the cabinets. And in here, there's some of the vacuum stuff, just, just some of the supplies that we keep inside here, a toolbox, the airline, um, the, the manuals and everything sit back here. There's an extra jack plate um, those are you know hard to get for the for the jack, hydraulic jacks. So when one of them got bumped off, um, we had a hard time getting one. So we ended up buying two. So just in case 
the uh, jack plate got knocked off, uh, we have one that's here and we can order another one to keep it as a backup. So the backup becomes the instant replacement. And speaking of the air line, air hose, there's the air that is connected. Uh, the air hose, you know, the, the line runs all the way down the trailer, uh, well underneath, and then up into the attic up on the other side. So up to the, uh, up to the compressor. So as you can see, everything, I mean, this trailer is absolutely loaded with a lot of, of terrific options, but you have to pay attention to your specific uses and what you need to be able to uh, modify or add to this. Oh, here's a, here's a good example. Here's, we were talking about the, the jack pistons. Well, this is something that I had fabricated um, because we stand back here and we do presentations. We don't have a podium per se, but if you're gonna stand here, we don't wanna be putting stuff on top of someone, on top of a desk in front of somebody. So we needed something where we could put things onto and have it be useful to stand behind as a podium. So what I did was this down here is the cover to the jack that's on this side, the hydraulic jack. This is the top of the hydraulic jack. So what I did was created, you know, designed a cap, like this is a 90 degree angle lip on this square box, and then have it be able to go over the top of the E-track and fit inside here. So it's a piece of sheet metal that was welded up, bent up and powder coated, and it fit as a cap, took the screws out of the, out of the top of this cabinet. So it now becomes the cap is no longer just the top of this. This is the cap. It's screwed in to that back there. It's also fastened and secured against the the, uh, uh, the the desk right there. So this is a solid, solid piece that's used for a podium. Put some uh, you know non-skid material and a little bit of uh, automotive trim to make it look like it's purposeful and nice, just like it was supposed to be there. And that was another ad addition that, you know, to solve, uh, you know, a problem of logistics inside, you know, being able to do a presentation. So once again, another little idea of, of how to be able to just modify the trailer for what it was. But the design of this trailer was designed to be desks all the way through, but we use it, as you saw from the earlier video, where we have equipment on each one of the, of, of the stations. And then right about here is where we have all the kids line up around here in a big, in like in a horseshoe shape and stand at this position and do a presentation to them as we go station to station to station. For example, on the smart board, which would be sitting this way, we'll have a picture of a part that's up there on SolidWorks. And on this side, we have the additive manufacturing, the 3D printer over here, and the subtractive manufacturing. The mill sits back here, and all of the parts, and then this controller sits over here. And station by station, you'll have a 3D printer here, a sewing machine, an industrial sewing machine there, a counting scale over here, a microscope here, um, the sheet metal bender will be here, soldering station over here, and um, calipers and micrometers and everything over here. So the discussion is literally about all the different types of manufacturing. We have laser engraved and laser cut uh, pieces of leather and wood over here. And just you know, showing them all the different areas of manufacturing. So originally a classroom, but because of this space right here, we have a horseshoe, put 15 kids in here and talk to them about advanced manufacturing with the smart board set up across back here as the backdrop while we do the explanation and tying in all the parts. So it works, this design works for us, but we had to do a lot of adaptation. Um, and one thing here, this is, uh, I know Cliff loved when I did this, um, as you can hear the noise level right now, it's kind of boomy inside there because of that, uh, because of the generator off to the side. So what I did was I put a bunch of this sound deadening material on the inside of that door but also on the inside of this door. So when you shut this, the sound level goes from this to this, much quieter. So 
That's about as much as I'm going to be able to give you with this. I hope all of this is informative, shows you what we have here. And if you have any further questions, I'm be welcome to answer anything or any, any suggestions you're looking for. If you have any questions, um, we're always around, like Cliff said. All right, take care.